Thank you, gentlemen. I want to add my voice to Senator Blumenthal and his concerns about what's happening in Syria. Um, I was in the grocery store at home on Friday, an old, rough and tough retired Marine came up to me. He was wearing a USMC hat. That's how I knew it, but I'd probably be able to figure it out even if he wasn't wearing the hat. And he introduced himself and said he just wanted to uh, ask me a question. You know, often in settings like that, the question might be about the VA and what they're doing for our vets. But the question was, what are we going to do about Syria? How can anybody stand by and watch what's happening to those little little children throughout Syria. I thought it was a very touching moment, but also indicative of how much normal Americans pay attention, not just to the humanitarian crisis there, but to the strategic disaster Syria has been for seven years. But for now, I want to turn my attention south to another civil war in which Iran is meddling, uh, General Votel uh, in Yemen. Um, when this war started three years ago, uh, much of the fighting was confined into the mountainous terrain uh, of Yemen, and now, um, Long-range missiles are being fired at King Khalid International uh, Airport outside of Riyadh. That seems like a dangerous escalation in the fighting there, does it not? I would absolutely agree, Senator. Where, where are Houthi rebels getting long-range missiles that can range the airport in Riyadh? Senator, they're getting them from Iran. Well, it's not very neighborly of Iran uh, with its neighbor Saudi Arabia. How are they getting those missiles into Yemen? Uh, Senator, I think the Iran has uh, has a, I think a very sophisticated network of doing this. They can certainly move. Uh, they can move in by components. They can move by air. They can move by maritime means. They can move by land uh, routes to uh, to to get their stuff in there and then reassemble it and provide it to the uh, to the to the Houthis. Um, can those missiles range the United Arab Emirates? I think, uh, Senator, some of this might be a discussion that's best handled in in uh, in, in a classified setting. But uh, certainly, we've seen, as you pointed out here, we've seen threats that have gone as far as as the international airport outside of Riyadh. Okay. If you were a Saudi leader or an Emirati leader, you probably wouldn't be very happy about those missiles being arranged your citizens, would you? And I I agree. This is and a, a dangerous threat. It's a dangerous terror. threat to them. It's a dangerous threat to yeah. us. We have 100,000 U.S. citizens that live and work in in Saudi Arabia. We also have more than a few naval and merchant ships going through the Bab El Mandeb, don't we? We absolutely do. Okay. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the nature of the intelligence and military support we are providing to the uh, coalition fighting in Yemen? Certainly, we 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 you know we are not parties to the civil war, uh, as you know, Senator. Um, our our principal focus in uh, in in Yemen has been on the counterterrorism front against Al Qaeda and now against ISIS there. Uh, but uh, we we are authorized to help uh, the uh, Saudis defend their border, uh, and so we uh, we have we have done that. We are doing that through uh, intelligence sharing, through logistic support, and through military advice uh, that. Uh, that, uh, that we provide to them. We are principally focused on the ballistic missile threat and the maritime threat that, is, uh, uh, that plays out in the Bab el Mandeb and in the Red Sea to the, to, the, uh, to the west of Yemen. Is it fair to characterize that as a primarily defensive operation in nature? That we're it, it is with? principally defensive and it is designed to, again, protect, uh, protect Saudi Arabia. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, General Wadhauser. There's been some open source reporting about uh, China's construction of the African Union headquarters in 2012. That open source reporting states that China installed microphones in the walls and under desks and has also copied data from servers each night. Um, AU has since installed new servers and swept its headquarters to remove these listening devices. Um, this kind of public disclosure of blatant Chinese espionage, espionage you would think, would cause many nations, but especially those victimized at the AU headquarters to think twice about accepting such Chinese generosity, if you will. Um, have you seen any kind of growing reluctance by the AU or by African nations um, to cooperate with China or support or accept that kind of aid, uh, given this espionage against the AU headquarters? I really haven't seen any reluctance on the part of the African countries individually to refuse any type of aid. I mean, I think that the, the Chinese uh, assistance with infrastructure building and the like is something that is welcome there. But then the agreements that they make, the arrangements that they make need to be scrutinized. I would say, however, to that point, with our base in Djibouti and the Chinese base right next door, the, this, what you describe is a big concern to us. I mean, we've got to make sure that our operational security is such that we can operate freely there, because it's not just AFRICOM that uses Djibouti. Special Operations Command, European Command, uh, CENTCOM all use that area, and we need the ability to operate freely there. I agree. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, both for your service and for your appearance today.